is 5-amino-1-MQ a peptide? Well, in this video, I'm going to show you how it's technically classified as a small molecule, but I'll also show you why it not being a peptide is lumped into the peptide world and why I think it's such a phenomenal molecule. And we'll take a deep dive into some of the history behind it and how it turns off this stubborn pathway called NNMT. Say that four times. All right, so let's jump in. I'm Reagan Archibald, founder of Ageless Future. The reason I make these videos and the reason I'm talking about 5-amino-1-MQ is because I want you to have the most robust health and live the longest possibly that you can and do that in a way that life becomes uh, continuously interesting. So 5-amino-1-MQ, what is this? Why is it important, Reagan? You've talked about this a lot in the past. This peptide was introduced to me by Ryan Smith, and he talked about the fact that he hadn't played basketball in years, and he got on the basketball court, and he realized like, oh, my vertical is so much lower than what it used to be. And so he's like, ah, we just got some 5-amino 1MQ in, let me try it. And he noticed that his vertical increased, like he was jumping much higher, he's lighter on his feet, and uh, I wanted to try it. After he introduced this to me, I believe this was 2018, maybe 2017, I started digging into it and I said, this looks really cool. In one of the studies, they found that the contractility of the soleus muscle, and that's the muscle on your calves, it caused an increase of contractility by 17% in the rodent models. Another study, they found that the muscle contractility increased by over 50% in certain animal models. And so I said, this is interesting. Where did it come from? Well, 5-amino-1-MQ is a molecule. It's technically a small molecule. And let me give you the science behind it because you asked, and then I'll tell you about why I get so excited about this. But technically, it's a quinolinium salt. And so 5-amino-1-MQ, MQ is just an abbreviation for methylquinolinium. And yes, it's a mouthful to say it, so we, hence we call it 5-amino. And that's what I'll be referring to throughout. Peptides are chains of amino acids, and all peptides do is it's a protein signal, like a small protein, a short protein chain that turns on genes and docks selectively on targets on cells. It's very selective. Small molecules like this quinolinium salt, it's not an amino acid structure. It's got no peptide bonds. It's got this rigid aromatic quinolium ring and it's a positively charged nitrogen agent. It really doesn't have anything in common. Why are we using it in the peptide world then? Well, because of its benefits. So researchers uncovered this pathway called NNMT in the 50s. And they looked at this pathway and they realized that when NNMT is expressed, people gain more weight. They stored fat, their bodies became more inflamed, they became metabolically inefficient. So they had a lot of like type two diabetes. And they found that obesity and diabetes are expressed through this NNMT pathway. And by uncovering that pathway, they said there's gotta be a way to inhibit this. Now, over the course of you know about six decades, which is crazy, the obesity problem has become worse and worse, as many of us know. And it was finally out of the University of San Antonio, Texas, in the medical division, what they started doing is they said, let's figure out if there's a molecule or a peptide, what kind of structure could inhibit this pathway? And so they tested thousands of molecules and they landed on 5-amino-1-MQ. And they were so excited because what they found is that when you inhibit this pathway, several things happen in the body. Now, if you're thinking about energy, if you're thinking about vitality, you go back to NAD. And NAD is a sirtuin activator. And what NAD does is it turns on these proteins that clean up the genes. That's really good, and you get more energy. It activates SIRT1 specifically, and when you have a sirtuin one activated, your body's going to have better DNA silencing, or you'll get better cellular replication. Application. You'll also get better cell signaling. So similar to peptides, it's creating a new signal. Just like NAD turns on different energy pathways, peptides do some of the same things. They also found that it activated AMPK. 
And AMP kinase is a secondary energy system. And so your body becomes more efficient at burning fat as an energy source. And you also have more energy. Who doesn't want that? And then the most interesting thing that they found is that this molecule and in the mice model, they found that mice taking 5-amino-1-MQ, these are obese mice, they lost almost 30% of their body weight in 10 days. Now they were using very high doses, which wouldn't recommend. We wanna to keep to smaller doses like 50 milligrams every day for a week, and then you go up to 100 milligrams every day for a week, and then 150 milligrams every day for a week or till it's gone based on what your provider recommends. And once again, this is not medical advice. This is me sharing some of the health optimization strategies that I use and the best course of action to take before you try any of these peptides or molecules would be to get your blood work ran, or work with a functional medicine physician who is trained in peptides. Agelessfeature.com, I've got a great medical team who can help you. So what they found in these mice is that it didn't just cause them to lose fat, it actually remodeled the entire way that the body it has an exchange with fat. The way the relationship worked with 5-amino-1-MQ, when you inhibit that NNMT pathway, now that fat becomes an energy source. So they saw the white fat turn to beige fat. So they got a little bit of this brown fat activation. They also found that they noticed that the adipocytes shrunk. And they found that by blocking this NNMT pathway, there was no lipogenesis, so no accumulation of new fat cells. So imagine this, imagine that you can shrink the fat cells, use them as an energy source, which is what you want, and then on the flip side, you stop accumulating fat, which is why 5-amino-1-MQ is such an important molecule to consider cycling, especially if you're on a GLP-1, like Ozembic or Majuro, Reditrutide, and you don't want to overexpress those genes. And I just think it's healthy for the body to pause on some of these pathways. And that's where 5-amino-1-MQ can keep you going, keep the momentum without risking your overall body composition to go in reverse and to gain the weight back. So the reason why it behaves like a peptide is because it increases AMPK, it increases NAD and sirtuin activation, specifically on the sirtuin-1 pathway. You get a decrease of white adipocytes or the white fat cells that accumulate and cause a lot of inflammation in the gut and the body. And then the biggest thing is it does cause mitochondrial biogenesis because it activates the pathway called the PGC1 alpha pathway that turns on mitochondrial biogenesis. So I love 5-amino-1-MQ because you get better what's called proprioception. You feel lighter on your feet. Metabolically, you see cholesterol levels drop. You'll see hemoglobin A1C come down. You'll also see, interestingly enough, a decrease in inflammatory markers when done properly. A lot of times we'll stack it with NAD, like the NAD nasal spray, with Mod SC because you're getting a further increase of muscle building. We'll also stack this with like BPC-157 and thymosin beta-4 so that you can recover from your workouts. So if you love this video and you're like, okay, so it's not a peptide, small molecule with massive opportunities, big upsides. Yes, there's more studies that need to be done on this, but to find out if it's right for you, go to agelessfuture.com, book your free health span assessment. My team will take care of you from there. Thanks for being on the channel. Love and appreciate you. I'm Reagan Archibald. I'll see you on the next video.